Good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me, that tells you how early it is. It's Thursday morning and we're starting in the garden. First thing, because I've got something on my mind. I've been laid in bed thinking, you haven't got any more seeds in that ground yet, Tracy. You're going to have to get some in because August is nearly over and it's going to be too late. It may be too late anyway, but then I thought, well, at least you've got the ones in the greenhouse. So look how far these have come on since we last spoke about them. Look, they're like brand new seedlings. I can't believe it. Now, the only one that's not doing as well as I hoped is the spinach, but even since I last looked yesterday, there's quite a few coming up. So I'm going to be happy with that. Now, these are supposed to be Augusta onions. <laughs> They don't look like onions to me. I'm thinking I might have dropped some lettuce seeds in. Anyway, the um, Paris silver skin are just starting to show. So the Augusta have got time yet, but they're doing fantastic. Some of these are ready to be pricked on. I'm not gonna do that now. I'm literally gonna go grab the hoe and I'm gonna hoe in between the carrots that I was getting really worried about. But the good news is, I feel like whispering. There's nobody else here because it's so early. Well, the ducks are here. Look at this. Now you might not be able to see, but amongst the weeds, there are carrots growing. So I'm going to hoe in between these as best I can and pull these weeds out again because it hasn't actually been that long since you and I did these weeds. Um, but obviously they're going to take over again if I don't get them done. So this is on my mind and this bed being empty is on my mind. So I'm going to get the seeds out, the weeds out of this bed first, get some seeds in and then I'm going to move on to this one. It should take like 15 minutes max. And while I'm getting on with this, I keep forgetting to update you on the pate situation. This is Stephen's reaction. Come on, come on, try it. Let's see what it tastes like. You might be better trying it on its own because the sourdough will be quite strong. The cracker. Even this one. Tastes like pate. That's a good thing then. Bless him. What did you think? He eats anything I put in front of him. He might not have the most enthusiastic reaction in the world, but he's taken all that patty on because I tasted it and it tastes like it smells, which is the usual, isn't it? I just couldn't, I couldn't even swallow it. I think, so on, on the recipe it says you can sieve it through um, a sieve and make it really, really smooth. Cause this, even though I'd done it in the food processor was still uh, grainy. Um, just like tiny little chunks for want of a better word i'm not selling it am i um and i can't deal with it it was just the smell the taste and and then the texture so unfortunately all three were a no from me um <clears throat> stephen said it it was nice he said just tastes like pate which is a it's a win for me um so he had the good idea of putting it in the freezer um the ones that he hasn't eaten until christmas he said bring it out at christmas we can have it with or he can have it um you know with whatever so it'll be uh, it'll come back out and we'll have round two around christmas time i think anyway let's have a look at what i've got done you're gonna have to excuse the ducks in the background um so we've got giant spinach mizuna hot purple mustard greens and leaf beet all direct sown in this bed um, hopefully, I mean, I think based on the mizuna in the greenhouse, we should get plenty of mizuna come up and hopefully we'll get some pickings off the rest of the stuff. Um, these are the swede that you saw me sow and also the beetroot that I'm hoping to harvest for the winter pantry. Got an Elvis thing going on. So I'm just going to get these covered up with the rake and just pat, pat it down a little bit. Um, I've taken the hole in between what I can on the bed behind me. So I'm happy with that. Um, and then the other beds that we've been working on with the potatoes, I'll show you the potato half. Harvest. Um, some of them are going to need using sooner than others, especially the one that I put the fork through. Um, some of them, the skins aren't too great on the purple ones. I said purple flesh. I'm thinking there might be white flesh. I can't remember. Um, <clears throat> so we'll get any of those processed that needs processing. Um, otherwise, I want to get other things in those beds as well, even if it's just for animal feed, um, even if we don't get to it over the winter, just to keep the beds producing. Right, I've just been checking um the last of the potatoes because grace and i i had a feeling that we'd missed a line yesterday because i stopped just before those courgettes anyway we had um so what i need to do today is go through or over the next couple of days doesn't have to be today um is go through these two beds and just turn them over essentially again i know it's no dig but i know there's also potatoes under there and the ground is not easy to get your hands in so it's going to need turning over 
um, just enough and also I need to harvest those potatoes at some point as well and I say it doesn't have to be today not to be lazy um, just because I've got a load of other stuff on and if they're under the ground um, they're not blighting so they'll be absolutely fine and basically just get these beds tidied up I, I was thinking about just leaving the foliage down the middle as a pathway and then I thought it's going to be a a slug house again um it depends what i'm putting in these beds to be honest but in the middle beds here we've got the red cabbages so maybe i'm going to take those out and just get them on the compost um i'm not worried about the foliage going on the compost or anything like that let's have a little look at these cabbages while we're here despite the um caterpillar or oh it is caterpillar look can you see there there's a couple anyway despite those um the hearts are still coming in the middle so i'm hoping for some decent cabbages what I'll have to do, I think, is spray it with um, the BT that I bought. So I talked about this previously. It's just the powder that Charles Dowden uses. It's totally natural. Basically, it gives the caterpillars a stomachache. Um, it does kill them. So, you know, it's not that natural that it doesn't kill them. Um, but it, basic it basically means that they're not going to want to come back and eat anymore. But can you see the amount of eggs underneath that one? So I'm definitely going to need to spray this because this is going to be riddled anytime soon. So we'll get that on the get that on the menu of things to do. I'm a little bit disappointed because it's quite a damp day today. Um, I didn't think it was going to be. Um, look at this lovely nasturtium that's flowering. All happily self-seeded, all on its own. Um, all edible, by the way, if you're into that. And the seeds as well. It's, I think, is it poor man's capers? Is that what people use them for? Anyway, I digress. Yes, quite a damp day today, so I'll see what I get up to. I need to get that tomato ketchup finished. And also yesterday, the kids and I went foraging and we got loads of brambles, um, some rose hips, the big fat uh, dog rose hips. I'll show you them all um, later on. And I also picked up some rome berries. I'm not too sure if the rome berries are ripe and it was because it was in quite a dark place where we got them from and I've seen them a lot brighter um, on the roadside. So we'll see about those, but definitely need to get to the brambles. I watched Simple Live in Alaska last night and they made a pie, a fruit pie, and I thought, oh my goodness, got to make something like that. It's usually an obligatory crumble and pie, isn't it, when their bramble and apple season comes in. Anyway, I've got all of those seeds sorted, so I'm really pleased about that because it was on my mind, um, so I'm glad that I've got that done. So at least all of these beds are filled at the moment. Um, the tomato bed, obviously the tomatoes around the edge might, well, will come out um, and there's all the leeks are left in there and parsnips. I'm not sure about whether or not to put more strawberries around the outside of the end bed like I've got here but given that it doesn't get that much sun probably a bad idea so I think I'll leave that for now. Anyway I'm going to head on in and I'll catch up with you very soon. Now that's done before I do anything else I need to finish this ketchup off so I've gathered the remaining ingredients we're going to make up a little spice bag and we're going to get it on together and see how this works out. I have got um, repurposed some old tomato ketchup bottles. So I've got, a, is it called Tip Tree? I think it's called that I've had before. Lovely tomato ketchup bottles. Um, they're really nice flavour inside the bottle as well, actually. Um, and that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to get those sterilised. I don't think this is going to make a heck of a lot. Once I've got it in the pan, I'll be able to gauge how much it's going to make. If it's not going to make that much, I'm not going to bother trying to process it for, to keep it for long term because it'll be gone within a month and it'll it'll keep in the fridge uh, for a month so let's pull this spice bag together first of all right so i've got the recipe here and it says the cinnamon allspice cloves mace celery seeds so the cinnamon's not going to fit in this spice bag this was just a little like um i've got these for doing my own herbal teas um just in case we're having more than the little teapot that i've got um, calls for and they were super cheap off eBay um, and supposedly they're recyclable you can, well you can reuse them whether or not they actually recycle out I'm not too sure on that but um, I was even thinking that once they're done I can dry them out and just use them as a fire starter on the fire but anyway I digress so we are going to add in so this is just a bag of allspice he says the one and a half teaspoons of whole allspice this is just a guide you're then going to see when it's done, how much um, it, may, it may want more or less of other things. About the same one and a half teaspoons thereabouts of whole cloves. That's probably slightly more. One and a half teaspoons of ground mace. One and a half, one and a half teaspoons of celery seed. There's a black peppercorn. We need to go and grab a bay leaf and a garlic clove and we're going to pop all of this with a cinnamon stick drop it into the tomato stew 
So I will be back with a garlic clove and a bay leaf. There we go, we've got one large bay leaf and it says one garlic clove, but I'm not sure that that's even legal. Um, so everything else there, I've got paprika as the only other ingredient, as well as the salt and pepper, which I haven't got here, that's not added yet. So here's the Dutch oven. And then we've got the large heavy bottomed pan, which is, um, I'm literally believe I'm gonna pour all of the tomatoes in that we're gonna use from last night, the spice bag and get it on the heat. Um, let's see what we decide to actually use though. This one is effectively the puree. There's very little extra liquid in that. Right, and then we've got these two. So this is the second closest to the puree, but still quite liquidy. And then can you see this one? I don't know if you can see on the camera, there's quite a bit of water on the top of that. I'm gonna put this one to one side. And I think, because the recipe talks about cooking it down for 20 to 40 minutes, I'm going to put all of this in because the liquid on this can then evaporate. Um, sorry for the dark. And hopefully it will just all look a bit more like this at the end. So I'm going to get all that in and get it on the heat with the spice bag in. Let's do this. I'm going to put the lid on while it comes up um, to temperature and then I'll take the lid off to let it evaporate. Otherwise, if the lid's on, obviously it'll keep the water inside and it'll miss the whole purpose of what I'm trying to do. So that's just on a medium heat there. We'll come back when it's warm. This is just starting to warm up. So I'm just going to mix in, looks like a big sausage. I'm just going to mix in the last of the ingredients. So in here, we have got 100 grams of soft brown sugar, quarter teaspoon or thereabouts of um, mustard. And first of all, actually, let me put this other ingredient in, which is 200 mils of pure apple cider vinegar. And that's, if you saw any bits in there, that's uh, with the mother. So it's um, it's got some little bits and pieces in it. I'm really sorry, I keep kicking the um, the tripod. <laughs> Still getting used to my new setup. All right, so I'm gonna mix all this in and then we're just gonna simmer it until it gets down to the consistency that you're happy with for tomato ketchup. It's not as, it's still got bits in, it's not as smooth, but I guess, would it be? Maybe I can immersion blend it at the end. Um, although saying that, it's only for Stephen and I. It's not gonna to have to pass the kids test. Right, let's leave this for 20 minutes or so. Now what's happening is all of the thick stuff, obviously is at the bottom. And then you've got the kind of the liquid on the top that's evaporating off. I'm tasting it. It's absolutely like molten lava. So if you do do this, be very careful. It's spitting everywhere. Um, and now it says add paprika, salt and pepper to taste. But be careful what salt you get out. Goodness me, I nearly added citric acid anyway, which it would have been fine because it's a uh, food grade. So I'm going to add a couple of different spices in, see where we get to. Then I'll write them down when I like it. Um, but I have brought out this. I've got a really old grinder of uh, hot chilli pepper. So I'm going to shove some of that in as well, because no matter how much you use it, it just never seems to go down. And then I have brought out one of the bottles that I was referring to, which is this size, just to see approximately how many I'll need. And then I'll make a decision on sterilising. I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with this. It is absolutely really, really tasty. I'm putting that single one up on the shelf because I've only got one at the moment because I've had a look at how much is in there and I think it's going to do maybe three or four, two or three more bottles. So maybe four in total. Um, and so I've got them soaking because I've got the labels on and everything still. Then I'm going to sterilise them. So all I'll do is reheat this. Um, I'll reheat this ketchup back up when I'm ready to bottle it. And in the meantime, I'm going to crack on with something else. Well, all in all, that's made four bottles and there's still quite a bit left. What's that? About 150 ml is left, uh, which will obviously have this first. These three bottles are sterilised and then all I did was I popped them in, um, stood them in some hot water to warm them up and then I potted it up hot and I've just turned them upside down. Um, they should be fine. Keep them in the fridge anyway, but they should be fine for, for months yet. Um, so I was quite pleased with how much it's made. 
there's another jar up here which we'll use straight away because this is just a washed clean bottle it wasn't sterilized because i didn't know how much it'd end up making but i think it's just over a liter maybe 1.2 1.3 liters i got out of mine obviously depends how juicy your tomatoes are and how much flesh is um is in them but yeah from three kilos i think i got maybe 1.2 1.3 liters now the other thing that we got yesterday um did i show you them did i just tell you them uh, an absolute load of brambles i washed them when i got home and then i've just uh, rinsed uh, drained them and put them in the fridge last night and i've just gone to look at a recipe because i thought given how many fermentation buckets we've got here for making wine every small holder simply has to make the country wine out of brambles but when i've looked at the recipe it says whatever you do don't wash them <laughs> <laughs> and I've washed them so these I'm going to do something else with these I'm going to go and pick a load more maybe today maybe tomorrow um, but I will get a load more to be able to make a country bramble wine because um, I want to get a few on the go I've got some rhubarb in the freezer as well I'm going to make a rhubarb wine I did try earlier in the year and I wasn't successful because this room was too hot and it went mouldy unfortunately so one thing to watch out for there um, but the other thing that I've been meaning to talk to you about is another confession that I've got, um, the freezers. So I haven't been able to get to the freezers for a while because everything that was in this room, when we took it all out, we just dumped in the garage on top of the freezers all around them. And it was just like a climbing frame to get to them. So there was one section I was able to get to and we were just eating from that. Now, what day is it today? It's Thursday. A week today, our pigs are going and we will get them back like on the following a week on the following Saturday, so the Saturday after the bank holiday Monday, and I need space in my freezers for two pigs. If anybody's ever seen how much is on a pig before from a meat perspective, um, it's a lot and I don't have enough space in my freezers. So over the next few days and videos, I'm gonna be concentrating on, just like I did for the garden, we're gonna have a challenge to see how much I can get canned up from the freezer and get onto the pantry shelves. Of course, I'll be showing you all of the things that I'm gonna be canning up, whether I take you through the whole process of everything or whether I just show you the end result. Um, I'm gonna do a few how-to videos, which I will do completely separately. I won't do in this vlog style that I seem to have adopted when I'm on holiday. But right now, I have to leave in about 10 minutes to be taxi yet again. Um, but what I'm going to do is take these brambles and do a bramble brandy, which will be absolutely divine. You can do bramble whiskey, but I haven't got any whiskey. Um, so I thought I could do it with the brandy that I've got left over from, from the pate that we're not going to talk about. I didn't buy it for the pate, thank goodness. Um, I was going to do some black currants with it, but we ate them all. I've just had a text. I need to leave. This is literally brambles granulated sugar and then brandy over the top so in the two seconds that i've got before we leave i'm just gonna whoop, pour some sugar over here add some more brambles a bit more sugar and then fill it up with brandy Now you only need a cheap brandy. This is the cheapest that Tesco had when I went for it to get something else. Because apparently everybody knows that there's a special pit in hell for people that use expensive brandy or expensive alcohol in these type of preserves. I'm just gonna leave that with the lid on and we'll see to that a little bit later. Right, we've just had tea so far and have an hour. Come down here and get some uh, firewood ready for the winter. So we've got about eight trees in this little. Do you want to get the pigs fed first? Ah, feeding time. Here you go, boys. I'll keep them quiet while we get this done. So it's just after tea and I've got an hour spare so started coming in we've got about eight trees in here what the sheep have hit the bark off so they've died over the year or two so they'll have seasoned quite well while they've still been up but the wind's starting to blow them now, down now so they're getting a bit dangerous so what I'm going to do is get all the branches off get all the thick logs that we're going to use for the winter stack them in a pile till the weekend and then we'll get them all cut up and put on the log pile so see how far we get on with that tonight
Well, I've just been down to do the pig's water while Stephen's finishing off over there in the distance. My thoughts are already turning to, in a week, they're not gonna be here, which is, it's always sad, but also on the practical side, what are we gonna do with the land when they've gone? Just turning off their road, the hose. We've got a hose that's extended all the way around the boundary into the field to save us having to manually carry all the buckets. Um, so they've really turned over a lot of the ground and we'll kind of do a video on it when they go and everything and have a look at it. And the idea is that we're gonna reseed it, make sure there's no more weeds coming through, reseed it and have it for grass in the coming years. But goodness me, <laughs> it's so, so boggy and bumpy. I think we'll probably have to wait until it dries out a bit and then roll it. But it's the first time we'll have done this, so it's a new one on us. But yeah, the idea is to keep the field all for grazing. We won't be growing veggies or anything else down there. We need we need all of the grass we can get for the animals, given that we don't have loads. Anyway, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it in a week or two. I want to check in on how Stephen's doing. I feel like that was a bit of a we're gonna pray. I feel like I say this every time, um, every year rather, but it's a really strange year. This apple tree here is as old as we know of anyway. We've got photos um, from aerial photos that I've managed to find on Google and things that show it in situ. I mean, it's really old and gnarly, but this year it hasn't got a single apple on it. It's really strange. There's a little tree there that's that's not made it as well. What we're going to have to do, I'm sure Stephen will say, but we're going to have to replant. Um, I'd like to do native British trees and ideally edibles. I've had a few ideas, needless to say, while I've been stood here videoing and helping. But even though this tree is really poor with apples, like literally I haven't seen one, the ones up in the veg plot are um, really abundant. I do love an old tree. Well, I'm going to take off one, two, three, four, five. Right. Well, there's more than I thought did, but we've got five left to take out. We've got a big enough pile to be getting on with for the weekend. Well, unfortunately, when we moved here and we put the sheep in with these trees, we didn't know sheep would eat the bark off the trees. So it's a shame that they've killed pretty much everything in here, apart from the fir trees or pine trees or whatever they are, and the silver birch. They haven't touched them or the old apple tree. With everything else, they've pretty much stripped the bark off all the way around. So I would assume in the next two or three years, the rest of the ones are going to die as well because they're not looking too healthy. But nothing goes to waste here, so this will keep us warm with all these for the next few years, along with the wood we've already got stocked. So like I say, nothing goes to waste. Look on the bright side, we'll just have to replant, protect them off somehow, maybe fence this area off. But we'll do something and replant and regrow and carry on. And as for all this, the little branches of it, the decent ones we'll take up to the house and use for the outside cooking, and the rest we'll just leave down here because in the winter we come down here and have fires in here and we cook outside in here in the winter. So, anyway, that's enough for tonight and enough from us. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>